hello everyone my name is arohi and welcome to my channel so guys in this video i'll talk about sr gans super resolution generative adversarial networks so super resolution is a process of improving or enhancing the image quality using various techniques so before sr gan also there were techniques like cnns convolutional neural network using which we can produce a high resolution image from a low resolution image but in some cases they were incapable of recovering finer details and they generate blurry images sometime so then sr gan came and with sr gan um you know with sr gan these issues mostly got resolved and uh, sr gan provided us better uh, high resolution images so let's see what are the things the sr gan uh, researchers introduced in their paper to get uh, a better quality of high resolution images okay so the first thing is they replaced the msc based loss function with the perceptual loss now what is this msc loss function why they replaced it with the perceptual loss let's discuss that so guys usually the super resolution algorithm focus on improving the resolution of a image by reducing the mean square error and by increasing the peak signal noise ratio which focus on pixel wise comparison means pixel by pixel comparison of the images which images the generated image the high resolution image generated by the um, gan sr gan and the real high resolution image okay so they do pixel by pixel comparison not the perceptual difference means they don't focus on perceptual difference msc based loss function focus on pixel to pixel comparison of both the images and sr gan used perceptual based loss function to reach its goal um, you know uh, what's their goal is to find the perceptual relevant characteristics between the both images okay so this perceptual loss function is a combination of adversarial loss and content loss adversarial loss means the loss which will you will get from discriminator and this content loss simply means the loss which uh, you will get from the generator and the generator loss and the um, discriminator loss the uh, the sum of these two uh, you will get a perceptual loss okay so the content loss content loss means the generator loss function okay so the content loss help enhance the perceptual similarity rather than improving the you know rather than improve doing improvement on the pixel space okay so what it does is is try to improve the perceptual similarity between the images okay and this loss function is preferred over mean square um, error loss function because we don't want to do the pixel by pixel comparison what we want is we want to improve the quality of the image which is generated by the generator and how we want to improve the image we want that the structural information perceptual uh, perceptually both the images resemble more okay this is what we want so that's why they replace the msc mean square error loss function and they introduced the this perceptual based loss function okay and let's talk about uh, okay before moving to the next part let's see this image over here you can see that this image over here in the center is a real image just imagine okay this is a real image and all the other images on the side are the um images generated by the generator just assume okay this so <coughs> sorry so all these distorted images are equally distant from the original image in terms of mean square error means if you'll use the mean square error loss function over here so mean square error function will give tell you that all the images which are on the side are equally distant from the real image which is in the center okay so because why it will give you uh, this thing because uh, mean square error only checks for pixel wise intensity difference but not the structural information about the content of the image okay now you can see over here this image this image uh, have a better quality as compared to the other images so if you'll use the perceptual loss then 
the structure uh, using the perceptual loss we can tell that the, these two images resembles but with mean square error mean square error tells you that all these distorted images are equally distant from the real image okay so this is what i was trying to say so that's why they replace the mean square error function okay so now let's discuss this a uh, content loss okay what is content loss content loss is the loss function you will calculate from the generator okay so content loss is also defined as vgg loss all right so this loss function evaluates the image quality based on its perceptual quality okay and how we can you know compare the perceptual how how will we how we will calculate this perceptual quality so for that there is an interesting way to do that we what we can do is we can compare the high level features of the generated image and the ground truth image or a real image means there is one high resolution image generated by a generator and there is one high resolution a real image from the data set now we will uh, when we pass this image through a network we get you know uh, feature maps remember con in convolutional neural networks we get feature maps after every layer okay so uh, let's uh, so what i'm saying is get the feature map of the generated image and also get the feature map of the uh, real image then compare both the feature maps uh for their perceptual difference okay for their structural difference so you can see in this image only so we are comparing the um, these are the feature maps from the different uh feature maps we get from after few layers and then we are comparing it so this is the technique they are using to get the difference between the real image and the fake image generated by a generator okay and this vgg loss is basically a euclidean distance between the feature representation of the both the images okay so and guys uh, for this um, for getting this feature maps how can we get the feature map because right now we are talking about sr gan right now for this feature maps you can use a pretrained model for example you want you can use vgg you can use resnet use any pretrained model uh, on imagenet okay and then uh, uh, pass both the images your original image pass that image from that pretrained network and let's say after five layers pick the feature maps okay and then pass the original <coughs> high resolution high resolution image from that pretrained network again and after five layers pick the feature map of that also and then compare the feature map of both this is how you calculate uh, this content loss okay and after that uh, next thing is the author proposed a new architecture that use 16 block deep resnet and they are performing a uh, high scaling four times they are uh, what they are doing is they using sr gan if you are giving a input image after processing that image from a sr gan your image will be four time bigger this is how high, uh, we are converting it into a high resolution image okay so sr gan up sample the image by a factor of 4 and produce a high resolution image this simply means that output image will be four time as large as the input image okay for example if the input image of size 172 into 208 pixels you give this image to your sr gan you will get a output image of high resolution and the size of that image would be 688 into 832 pixel which is four time larger than 172 into 208 pixels okay so now increasing the image size means increasing the number of pixels and low resolution image means that the number of pixel in an area uh, is less and due to which your image look blurred or rough okay so uh, now let's see how sr gan uh, you know what is the layer architecture what how generator is working how discriminator is working because we are talking about gans and in every gan network we have generator and discriminator okay so now let's see how the generator and discriminator of sr gan 
work will go through the layer architecture will go through the architecture of that okay so let's start with uh, generator so before that also every time whenever you want to work on any algorithm we need the data set okay so what kind of data set sr gain accepts and uh, how it works on it so let's see so first thing is data set sr gain need data set in the pairs of high resolution and low resolution images okay so let's say if you're giving a high resolution image you need a low resolution image of that also so this this kind of pair you need okay so what we can do is we will collect the high resolution images first once you collect the high resolution images then we can downscale those high resolution images to make them a low resolution images and how we can downsample we can downsample those high resolution image images um synthetically you can you can you know add noise you can downgrade the image by blurring okay so the, these are the ways so now we have high resolution images and corresponding low resolution images now we have a pair of high and low resolution images okay so guys if you don't want to prepare your own data set so there are data sets already available for super resolution testing like div 2k you can use that all right so like every gan network sr gan has generator and discriminator generator model will take low resolution um image as a input and we can train it to produce a high resolution image that match the original ones the best okay and generator up sample the low resolution image by a factor of 4 okay and will um, yeah that's it by a factor of 4 and then we have a discriminator discriminator will be trained to distinguish between the high resolution image means the real high resolution image and the um, generated high resolution image or uh, by a generator we will uh, discriminator will try to find out the difference between these two and then it will update the weight of generator and discriminator using black propagation in order to make them best in their work okay so now let's see the layer architecture okay i've given you the brief idea now let's see the architecture one by one firstly we are seeing the architecture of generator okay so here generator architecture is basically a fully convolutional uh, uh, this sr resnet model and uh, you can see firstly we are passing a low resolution input through an initial convolutional layer and we are using a kernel size of 9 by 9 over here and we have 64 filter maps followed by a parametric relu layer okay see guys in the if you'll see <coughs> sorry in this entire generator architecture we are using parametric relu as a primary activation function okay and the reason of for choosing this parametric relu is because uh, it is one of the uh, best non linear function for this particular type of task like for mapping low resolution to high resolution images okay and then the output of p relu is fed to the next set of layers and you can see the residual blocks okay so there are 16 residual blocks as per the model architecture and within the each residual block if you'll see see inside each residual block there are two convolutional layers and the filter kernel size over there is 3 by 3 and 64 maps a uh, feature map sorry and then uh, it is followed by a batch normalization layer and the uh, p relu layers as activation function <coughs> and finally we are doing a element wise sum method now element wise sum what is happening over here we are adding a residual block batch normalization output with the output of p relu from the previous step okay and this batch normalization this batch normalization is inserted between each layer to stabilize the learning process of the model right so for the this sr resnet model batch normalization model uh, constant of 0.8 is added next to the convolutional layer okay so then we are using pixel shuffler uh, in generator model right so which will produce the super resolution images so guys this pixel shuffler will increase 
the image four time okay so this is mainly responsible for uh, producing the high resolution image okay so this pixel shuffle layer transform the feature maps from low resolution image to a high resolution image and guys <coughs> sorry and okay guys let me tell you that this pixel shuffling how it works this pixel a uh, shuffler basically what it does is it convert the number of channels we have the number of channels right so it convert the number of channels into height and width you can see over here in this side we have the number of channels and you can see now these number of channels are uh, converted into height and width and are num now you can see the resolution of the images increased okay that's how pixel uh, shuffler work okay so finally you will get a high resolution image after passing from all these layers finally generator will give you a high resolution image okay then we have discriminator discriminator model is basically an image classification model right that identifies if the image fed to the discriminator are real or fake real or fake simply means the real high real means the real high resolution image and the fake image mean the high resolution image generated by a generator okay so the real image and the this i've told you after that now let's see the layer architecture of discriminator so we are giving two inputs to discriminator first first input to discriminator is the output of the generator and the second input to a discriminator is the real high resolution image from our data set okay the first layer in the discriminator block is convolutional layer which has 64 filters kernel size is 3 stride is 1 and padding is same after that we have a leaky relu activation function so the guys the alpha value for the leaky relu is set to 0 0.2 for this uh, structure okay so uh, it, it simply means that we are adding one constant value in our activation function all right so then we have bunch of repeating blocks of convolutional layers followed by batch normalization and the leaky relu activation function so uh, this discriminator discriminator block this network contains eight convolutional layers with an increasing number of 3 by 3 filter kernels by a factor of 2. You can see that initially we started with the 64 kernels and we end up with 512 kernel. So it is increasing by a factor of 2. You can see here. Okay. And this strided convolutionals are used to reduce the image resolution each time the number of features is doubled. So guys, uh, we, uh, when we use the stride 2 or something like that, so that means we are reducing uh, without using a pooling layer, you can reduce the size of the image. Okay. So the output of the convolutional blocks is fed to dense layer, which has 1024 neurons followed by leaky ReLU. And there is another dense layer with sigmoid activation function to obtain the probability of the classification for fake image or a real image, right? The fake image again means the high resolution image generated by the generator, okay? And the real image means the real high resolution image, okay? So this is how it works. So guys, finally, uh, both the networks are trained simultaneously and they both get better by time and once the training is done all we need is a generator because what we want is we want to generate the high resolution images and who is generating the high resolution images generator discriminator just you need discriminator at the time of training your model once your training is done you only need generator because generator will generate the high resolution images okay so that's it guys um in my next video i'll show you how to practically implement srgan right and i hope this video is helpful thank you for watching